ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय मातिमीरांदनजना शलाकया चक्षुरोन्मील तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्यमनोबीस्त स्थापित येन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददाती स्वापदाति कम वंदेह श्रीगुरोपतकमल श्रीगुरून वैष्णव श्रीरूप सगृजात सगनरगुना तन्व तम सजीव सावैत सवदूत पिजन सहित श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधाकृष्ण पाद सह गणलिता श्री विशाखा हे कृष्ण करुण सिंधो दीन बंधो जगत्पते कुपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तु ते तप्त कांचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदवनेश्वरी वृषा भानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रि वाचाकूप्य कृपा सिंधुप्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नम विष्णुपदाय कृष्णपृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्तिवेदातस्वामीनामि नमस्ते सरस्वते देवे गौरवा प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषून्यवादी पाशतरिषतारिणे च श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैतादार श्रीवासारी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Please accept my humble obeisance as all glories to Shri Prabhupada. So today we continue from chapter ten of Krishna book. <clears throat> Devarsh Prabhu, do you want to start? The uh, am I audible? Yes, Prabhu. The story of cursing of Nala Kovera and Mani Griva. And that deliverance by Krishna under the all this blissful desire tree, under the all blissful desire of great sage Narada is here described. The two great demigods, Nal Kuvera and Mani Griva, were the sons of the treasurer of demigods Kuvera, who was a great devotee of Lord Shiva. By the grace of Lord Shiva, Kuvera's material opulences had no limit. As a rich man's sons often became addicted to wine and women, so these two sons of Kuvera. Kuvera was also addicted to wine and sex. One, these two demigods, desiring to enjoy, entered the garden of Lord Shiva in the province of Kailasa, on the banks of Mandakini Ganges. Uh, there they drank much and engaged in hearing the sweet singing of beautiful women who accompanied them in the garden of fragrant flowers. In an intoxicated condition, they both entered the water of Ganges. Which was full with lotus flower, and there they began to enjoy the company of young girls exactly as the male elephant enjoys the female elephants within the water. While first they were enjoying themselves in the water, all of a sudden Narada, the great sage, happened to pass that way. He could understand that the demigods Nalakuvar and Manigriva were too intoxicated and could not even see that he was passing. The young girls, however, were not so intoxicated and. as the demigods and they at once became ashamed and with all his uh, ashamed at being naked before the great sage narada they began to cover themselves with all his the two demigods sons of kuvera were so intoxicated that they could not appreciate the presence of sage narada and therefore did not cover their bodies on seeing the two demigods so degraded by intoxication narada Desired their welfare, and therefore he exhibited his causeless mercy upon them by cursing them. Because the great sage Narada was compassionate upon them, he wanted to finish their false enjoyment of intoxication and association with young girls, and wanted them to see Lord Krishna eye to eye. He conceived of cursing them as follows. He said that the attraction for material enjoyment is due to an increase. of the mode of passion a person in the material world 
when favored by the material appearances of rigid, generally become selected to three things intoxicants, in, intoxication, sex, and gambling. Materially opulent men being puffed up by being puffed up with the accumulation of wealth also become so merciless that they indulge in killing animals by opening slaughterhouses. And they think that they themselves will never die. Such foolish persons, forgetting the laws of nature, become overly infatuated with the body. They forget that the material body, even though very much advanced in civilization up to the positions of demigods, will finally be burned to ashes. And while one is living, whatever the external condition of the body may be, within there is only stool, urine, and various kinds of warmth. Thus, being engaged in jealousy and violence to other bodies, materials, materialists cannot understand the ultimate goal of life. And without knowing the goal of life, they generally glide down to a hellish condition. In their next birth, such foolish persons commit all kinds of sinful activities on the account of this temporary body. And they are even unable to consider whether this body belongs to them. Generally, it is said that the body belongs to the person who feeds the body. One might therefore consider whether this body belongs to one personally or to the master to whom one renders service. The master of the slave claims right to the bodies of the slave because the master feeds the slave. It may be questioned then whether the body belongs to the father who is the seed giving master of this body or to the mother who develops this child body in her womb. Foolish persons are engaged in committing all sorts of sins due to misconceptions of identifying the material body with the self. But one should be intelligent enough to understand to whom this body belongs. A foolish person indulges in killing other animals to maintain the body. But he does not consider whether this body belongs to him or to his father or to his mother or grandfather. Sometimes a grandfather or a father gives his daughter in charity to a person with a view of getting back the daughter's child as a son. The body may also belong to a stronger man who forces it to work for him. Sometimes the slave body is sold to the master on the basis that the body will belong to the master. And at the end of life, the body belongs to the fire because the body is given to the fire and one to the ashes. Or the body is thrown in the street to be eaten by the dogs and vultures. Before committing all kinds of sins to maintain the body, one should understand to whom this body belongs. Ultimately, it is concluded that the body is a product of material nature, and at the end it merges into material nature. Therefore, the conclusion should be that the body belongs to material nature. One should not wrongly think that the body belongs to him. To maintain a false possession, why should one indulge in killing? Why should one kill innocent animals to maintain the body? When a man is infatuated with false prestige of opulence, he does not care for any moral instruction but indulges in wine, woman, and animal killing. In such circumstances, a poverty stricken man is often better situated because a poor man thinks of himself in relation to other bodies. A poor man often does not wish to inflict injuries to other bodies because he can understand more readily that when he himself is injured, he feels pain. As such, the great sage Narada considered that because the demigods Nalkuvara and Manigriva were so infatuated by false prestige, they should be put into the condition of light devoid of appearance. A person who has a pin prick in his body does not wish to others to be pricked by pins. A considered man in the life of poverty does not wish others to be also put in that condition. Generally, it is seen that one who has risen from poverty sticker life and becomes wealthy create some charitable institution at the end of his life. So others, poverty-stricken men might be benefited. In short, a compassionate poor man may consider others' pains and pleasure with empathy. A poor man may be seldom puffed with false pride, and he may be freed from all kind of infatuation. He may remain satisfied by whatever he gets from his maintenance by the grace of Lord. To remain in poverty-stricken condition is a kind of austerity. According to Vedic culture, therefore the Brahmanas, as a matter of routine, kept themselves in poverty-stricken condition to save themselves from the false prestige of material appearance. False prestige, due to the advancement of material prosperity, is a great impediment for spiritual emancipation. A poverty-stricken man cannot become unnaturally fat 
by eating more and more. And on account of not being able to eat more than he requires, his senses are not very turbulent. When the senses are not very turbulent, he cannot become violent. Another advantage of poverty is that a saintly person can easily enter a poor man's house. And thus the poor man can take advantage of a saintly person's association. A very opulent man does not allow anyone to enter his house. Therefore, a saintly person cannot enter. According to the Vedic system, a saintly person takes the position of a mendicant, so that on the plea of begging something from the householder, he can enter any house. The householder who has naturally, who has usually forgotten everything about spiritual advancement because he is making, uh, because he is busy maintaining family affairs, can be benefited by the association of saintly person. There is a great chance for the poor man to be become liberated through association with a saint. Of course, of what use are the persons who are puffed up with material opulence and prestige if they are bereft of the association of saintly persons and devotees of the Supreme Personality of Godhead? The great saint Narada thereafter thought it was his duty to put those demigods into a condition where they could not be falsely proud of their material opulence and prestige. Narada was compassionate and wanted to save them from their fallen life. They were in the mode of darkness and being therefore unable to control their senses, they were addicted to sex life. It was the duty of a saintly person like Narada to save them from their above minimum condition. In animal life, the animal has no sense to understand that he is naked. But Kuera, the treasurer of the demigods, a very responsible man, Nal Kuvera and Nal Kuvera and Manigripa were two of his sons, and yet they had become so animalistic and irresponsible that they could not understand due to intoxication that they were naked. To cover the lower part of the body is the principle of human civilization, and when a man or woman forgets this principle, they become degraded. Narada therefore thought that the best punishment for them was to make them immovable living entities or trees. Trees are by nature's law immovable. Although trees are covered by the mode of ignorance, they cannot do harm. The great says Narada thought it was fitting that although the brother, by his mercy, would be punished to become trees, they continue to keep their memory and to be able to know why they were being punished. After changing the body, a living entity generally forgot his previous life. But in special cases, by the grace of the Lord, as with Nalpuvera and Manigriva, one can remember. Says Narada therefore contemplated that the two demigods should remain for 100 years in the time of demigods in the form of trees, and after that they would be fortunate enough to see the supreme personality of God face to face by his causeless mercy. mercy. And thus they would be again promoted to the life of demigods and great devotees of the Lord. After this, the great Sri Narada returned to his abode known as Narayana Ashrama, and the do and the two demigods turned into trees, known as twin Arjuna trees. The two demigods were favored by the causeless mercy of Narada and given a chance to grow in Nanda's courtyard and see Lord Krishna face to face. Although the child Krishna was bound up to the wooden mortar, he be began to proceed towards the growing trees in order to fulfill the pro prophecy of his great devotee Narada. Lord Krishna knew that Narada was his great devotee and that the trees standing before him as the twin Arjuna trees were actually the sons of Kuvera. I must now fulfill the words of my great devotee Narada, he thought. And then he began to proceed through the passage between the two trees. Although he was unable to pass through the passage, the large wooden mortar, he was able to pass through the passage, the large wooden mortar stuck horizontally between the trees. Taking advantage of this, Lord Krishna began to pull the rope, which was tied to the mortar. As soon as he pulled with great strength, the two trees with all the branches and limbs fell down immediately with a great sound. Out of the broken, fallen trees came two great personalities, shining like blazing fire. All five became illuminated and beautiful by their presence. The two purified bodies immediately came before child Krishna and bowed down to offer their respect and prayers in the following words. 
dear lord krishna you are the original personality of god master of all mystic powers learned brahmanas know very well that this cosmic manifestation is an expansion of your potencies is a expansion of your potencies which are sometimes manifest and sometimes unmanifest you are the original provider of the life body and senses of all living entities you are the eternal god lord vishnu who is all pervading the principal controller of everything you are the original source of the cosmic manifestation which is acting under the spell of three modes of material nature goodness passion and ignorance you are living as the super soul in all the multi forms of life living entities and you know very well what is going on within their bodies and minds therefore you the supreme director of all activities of all living entities therefore you are the supreme director of all activities of all living entities but although you are in the midst of everything which is under the spell of material nature material modes of nature you are not affected by such contaminated qualities no one under the jurisdiction of the material modes can understand your transcendental qualities which existed before the creation therefore you are called the supreme brahman who is always glorified by his personal internal potencies in this material world you can be known only by your different incarnations although you assume different types of body these bodies are not part of the material creation they are, they are always tools of transcendental potencies of unlimited opulence strength beauty fame wisdom and renunciation in the material existence there is a difference between the body and the owner of the body but because you appear in your original spiritual body there is no such difference for you when you appear your uncommon activities indicate that you are the supreme personality of god such uncommon activities are not possible for anyone in the material existence prabhu other person can read now de krishna prabhu thank you so much prabhu jaisa prabhu de krishna le bhang prabhu and vivek prabhu tanda pranam jaisa prabhu just a moment <clears throat> are you drawing prabhu what's happening there oh hari krishna <laughs> hari bo hari bo okay Where are you, Prabhus? You are, ne? You are that... <clears throat> you are that supreme personality of Godhead now appearing to cause the birth and death as well as liberation of the living entities and you are full with all your... Planet, your plenary expansions you can bestow on everyone and all kinds of benediction, O oh Lord. O oh, oh source of all fortune and good... Go- goodness we offer our respectful obeisances unto you you are you are the the all pervading supreme personality of godhead the source of peace and the supreme person the supreme person in the dynasty of king yadu o oh lord our father known as kuvera the demigod is your servant similarly the great sage narada is also your saviour se- and by the grace of by the grace only we have been able to see your pers- you personally we therefore pray that we may always be engaged in your transcendental loving service by speaking only about your glories and hearing about your transcendental activities may our hands and other limbs be engaged in your service and our mind always be concentrated at your lotus feet and our heads always bowed down before the all pervading universal form of your lordship when the demigods naku nakuvara and my my king manigriva 
finish their prayers. The child, the child Lord Krishna, the master and proprietor of, of Gokula, bound to the wooden grinding mortar by the ropes of Yash Yeshuda, began to smile and said, It was already known to me that my great devote devotee sage Narada had shown his causeless mercy by saving you from the abnormal con condition of pride due to possessing extraordinary beauty and opulence in the family of the demigods. He has saved you from gliding down into the lowest condition of hellish life. And these facts are always are already known to me. You are very fortunate because you were not only cursed by him, but you had the great opportunity to see him. If someone is able to, by chance to see a great saintly person like Narada face to face, who is always ser serene, is it serene, serene, and merciful to everyone, then immediately that conditioned soul becomes liberated. This is exactly like being situated in the full light of the su sun. There cannot be any visionary imped impediments. Therefore, O oh, Nakula, Naku, Nakuvara, and Mani, Mani Griva, your lives have now become successful because you have developed aesthetic love for me. This is your last birth within material existence. Now you can go back to your father's residence in the heavenly planet. And by remaining in the attitude of devotional service, you will be liberated in, the, in this very life. After this, the demigods circumambulated the Lord may, may, many times and bowed down before him again and again. And thus they left. The Lord remained bound up with ropes to the grinding mortar. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta pro, purport of the 10th chapter of Krishna deliverance of Naku, Nakuva, Naguvara and Manigriva. What? Manigriva. Hare Krishna, Asif Prabhu. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, Prabhupada. Danvat Pranam, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Please forgive me. I have to leave. Prabhu. Thank you so much for association and reading, Prabhu. Please join tomorrow also. Hare Prabhu. Samio. What is, how do you pronounce it? Samio. Oh, it's a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> it's my I thought it's it, like my nickname. It's my Italian name. Oh, oh. <gasps> when I make pizza prasada, I use this name. Oh, <laughs> Sami O. Is it do I pronounce it correctly? Sami O. Yes, but I've never heard this name before, so I don't know how it's pronounced. Oh. <laughs> Terrible. Now we will read one more chapter. <clears throat> How many pages? I think seven pages. Seven. Yeah, Every I think we can share. Yes, Prabhu. I can start, Prabhu. Oh, you can start? Yes, Prabhu. Okay, chapter 11. No problem. Killing the demons, Vatsasura and Bakasura. This Vatsa means stomach in Finnish language. Finished. Oh, it means What's the language? in in fin Finnish language. We we speak Finnish in Finland. So this what's <laughs> mean? it means stomach. <laughs> what's the name? What's the name of your language? Finnish, like it's done. Finished. Yeah, it's finished. <laughs> you need to teach me that one. <laughs> yes, <probably. laughs> speak that language. And and it is Finnish. <laughs> In South Africa, besides English, it's like we have 12 languages or 11. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Africa has many languages. Yeah. So. <laughs> now, like, excluding Africa on its own, just South Africa on its own, oh, yes. those 12 languages are spoken in South Africa. And then besides Nigeria, besides Kenya, Angola, they all have their own languages. Yes, Prabhu. Yeah, I've seen many videos. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yes, that's it, Prabhu. No, no problem. Thank you for joining. So killing the demons, Vatsasura and Bakasura. When the twin Arjuna trees fell to the ground, making sound like the falling of thunderbolts, all the inhabitants of Gokula, including Nanda Maharaj, immediately came to the spot. 
they were very much astonished to see how the two great trees had suddenly fallen. Because they could find no reason for their falling down, they were puzzled. When they saw child Krishna bound up to the wooden mortar by the ropes of Yashoda, they began to think that it must have been caused by some demon. Otherwise, how was it possible? At the same time, they were much, very much perturbed because such uncommon in incidences were always happening to the child Krishna. <clears throat> While the elderly cowherd men were thus contemplating, the small children who were playing there informed the man that the trees fell due to Krishna. Krishna's pulling the wooden mortar with the, with the ropes to which he was bound. Krishna came in between the two trees, they explained, and the wooden mortar was topsy-turvied and stuck in between the trees. Krishna began to pull the rope and the trees fell down. When the trees fell down, two very dazzling men came out of the trees and they began to talk to Krishna. <clears throat> Most of the cowherd men did not believe the statements of the children. They could not believe that such things were at all possible. Some of them, however, believed some of them however believed them and told nanda maharaj your child is different from all other children he just might have done it nanda maharaj began to smile hearing about the extraordinary abilities of his son he came forward and untied the knot just to free his wonderful child after being freed by nanda maharaj krishna was taken onto the laps of the elderly gop gopis they took him away to the courtyard of the house and began to clap, praising his wonderful activities. Krishna began to clap along with them, just like an ordinary child. The Supreme Lord Krishna, being completely controlled by the gopis, began to sing and dance, just like a puppet in their hands. <clears throat> Sometimes Mother Yashoda used to ask Krishna to bring her a wooden plank for sitting. Although the wooden plank was too heavy to be carried by a child, still somehow or other Krishna would bring it to his mother. Sometimes while worshipping Nar Narayana, his father would ask him to bring his wooden slippers and Krishna with great difficulty would put the slippers on his head and bring them to his father. When he was asked to lift some heavy article and was unable to lift it, he would simply move his arms. In this way, daily at every moment, he was the reservoir of all pleasure to his parents. <clears throat> the Lord was exhibiting such childish activities before the inhabitants of Vrindavan because he wanted to show the great philosophers and sages searching after the Absolute Truth how the Supreme Absolute Truth, Personality of God, is controlled by any subject to the desires of his pure devotees. One day, a fruit vendor came before the house of Nanda Maharaj. Upon hearing the vendor call, If anyone wants fruits, please come and take them from me. Child Krishna immediately took some grains in his palm and went to get fruits in exchange. In those days, exchange was by barter. Therefore, Krishna might have seen his parents exchange fruits and other things by bartering grains and so he imitated. But his palms were very small and he was not very careful to hold them tight. So he was dropping the grains. The vendor who came to sell fruits saw this and was very much captivated by the beauty of the Lord. So he immediately accepted whatever few grains were left in his palm and filled his hands with fruits. In this meantime, the vendor saw that his whole basket of fruit had become filled with jewels. The Lord is the bestower of all benediction. If someone gives something to the Lord, he is not loser. He is the gainer by million times. Hmm. And Prabhu... Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Here is the picture. You must, remind, you must remind me when you are done that I think we were in discussion yesterday about the material engagement activities. You remember you were asking them about running? Oh, yes, Prabhu. Yeah, and then I think I found some audio book. It's what? It's an audio from Srila Prabhupada when he was 
It is actually chapter 3, verse 1 until verse 5, where he was saying that material activities, no, you don't give them up. You just have to align them with Krishna. Everything that you get, you just align them. Because I remember, I think it was Manu Prabhu who was talking the same thing about running and all these things. Yes, Prabhu. But then when you're done, we'll go to it. Okay. Prabhu, here is the picture of Krishna bringing the grace to the fruit vendor and she gave him all the fruits, his mango and all nice fruits. His beautiful Krishna. And then Krishna, in exchange, there was so many jewels. <clears throat> One day, Lord Krishna, the liberator of the twin Arjuna trees, was playing with Balaram and the other children on the bank of the Yamuna. And because it was already late in the morning, Rohini, the mother of Balaram, went to call them back home. But Balaram and Krishna were so engrossed in playing with their friends that they did not wish to come back. They just engaged themselves in playing more and more. When Rohini was unable to take them back home, she went home and sent Mother Yashoda to call them again. Mother Yashoda was so affectionate towards her son that as soon as she came out to call him back home, her breast filled up with milk. She loudly cried, My dear child, please come back home. Your time for lunch is already past. She then said, My dear Krishna, Oh, my dear Lotus I child, please come and suck my breast. You have played enough. You must be very hungry, my dear little child. You must be tired from playing for so long. She also addressed Balaram Das, my dear, the glory of your family, please come back with your younger brother Krishna immediately. You have been engaged in playing since morning and you must be very tired. Please come back and take your lunch at home. Your father Nan Nandaraj is waiting for you. He has to eat, so you must come back so that he can eat. As soon as Krishna and Balaram heard that, the Nan that Nanda Maharaj was waiting for them and, he and could not take his food in their absence, they started to return. Their other playmates complained. Krishna is leaving us just at the point when our playing is at the summit. Next time we shall not allow him to leave. His playmates then threatened not to allow him to play with them again. Krishna became afraid and instead of going back home, he went back again to play with the boys. <gasps> at that time, Mother Yashoda scolded the children and told Krishna, my dear Krishna, do you think that you are a street boy? <laughs> you have no home? Please come back to your home. I see that your body has become very dirty from playing since early morning. Now come home and take your bath. Besides, today is your birthday ceremony. Therefore, you should come back home and give cows in charity to the brahmanas. Don't you see how your playmates are decorated with ornaments by their mothers? You should also be cleansed and decorated with nice dress and ornaments. Please, therefore... Come back and take your bath, dress yourself nicely, and then again you may go on playing. In this way, Mother Yashoda called back Lord Krishna and Balaram, who are worshipable by great demigods like Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva. She was thinking of them as her children. <clears throat> when Mother Yashoda's children, Krishna and Balaram, came home, she bathed them very nicely and dressed them with ornaments. She then called for the Brahmanas, and through her children, she gave many cows in charity for the occasion of Krishna's birthday. In this way, she performed the te birthday ceremony of Krishna at home. After this incident, all the el elderly members of the cowherd men assembled together, and Nanda Maharaj presided. They began to consult among themselves how to stop great disturbances in the Mahavan, Mahavana on account of the demons. In, in this meeting, Upananda, brother of Nanda Maharaj, was present. He was considered to be learned and experienced, and he was a well-wisher of Krishna and Balaram. He was a leader, and he began to address the meeting as follows. My dear friends, now we should live here for another place, because we are continually finding that great demons and are coming here to disturb, disturb the peaceful situation. And they are especially attempting to kill the small children.
just consider Putana and Krishna, it was simply by the grace of Lord Hari that Krishna was saved from the hands of such a great demon. <laughs> he said, <"Look." laughs> that's so funny. It was simply by the grace of Lord Hari that Krishna was saved from the hands of such a great demon. Next, the whirlwind demon to Krishna way in the sky, but by the grace of Lord Hari, he was saved, and the demon fell down on a stone slab and died. Very recently, this child was playing between two trees, and the trees fell down violently, and yet there was no injury to the child. So Lord Hari saved him again. Just imagine the calamity if these children or any other children playing with him were crushed by the falling trees. Consider all these incidences. We must, we must conclude that this place is no longer safe. Let us leave. We have all been saved from different calamities by the grace of Lord Hari. Now we should be cautious and leave this place and reside somewhere where we can live peacefully. I think that we should all go to the forest known as Vrindavana, where just now there are, there are newly grown plants and herbs. It is very suitable for pasturing ground for our cows and, and, and we and our families, the gopis with their children can very peacefully live there. Near Vrindavan, there is a Govardhan hill which is very beautiful and there is newly grown grass and fodder for the animals so there will be no difficulty in living there. I therefore suggest that we start immediately for that beautiful place as there is no need to waste any more time. Let us prepare all our cards immediately and if you like, let us go, keeping all the cows in front. On hearing the statement of Upananda, all the cowherd men immediately agreed. Let us immediately go there. Everyone... Everyone then loaded all their household furniture and utensils on the carts and prepared to go to Vrindavan. All the old men of the village, the children and women were arranged on seats and the cowherd men equipped themselves with bows and arrows to follow the carts. All the cows and bulls, along with their calves, were placed in the front and the men surrounded the flocks with their bows and arrows and began to bl blow on their horns and buggles. In this way, with Tamilto sound, they started for Vrindavan. And how and and who can describe the damsels of Raja? They were all seated on the carts and were very beautifully dressed with ornaments and costly saris. They began to chant the pastimes of child Krishna as usual. Mother Yashoda and Mother Rohini were seated on a separate cart, and Krishna and Balaram were seated on their laps. While Mother Rohini and Yashoda were riding on the cart, they talked to Krishna and Balaram, and feeling the pleasure of such talks, they looked very, very beautiful. <clears throat> In this way, after reaching Vrindavan, where everyone lives eternally, very peacefully and happily, they encircled Vrindavan and kept the carts all together. After seeing the beautiful appearance of Govardhan on the bank of the river Yamuna, they began to construct their places of residence. While those of the same age were walking together and children were talking with the parents, the inhabitants of Vrindavan felt very happy. Haribol, okay, who wants to continue? Oh, we have three pages. Hare Krishna Prabhu, please accept my humble obeisances all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna Prabhu, please accept my humble obeisances all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Pranjal Prabhu also Dandar Pranam Jai Shri Prabhupada. Who wants to read? Vivek Prabhu, can you read? Or Asit Prabhu? Asit Prabhu. Asit Prabhu, you can read. I will read tomorrow. Oh, Ooh, I saw Pranjal Prabhu. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> Asit, what a, what a blessing. Yeah, Asit Prabhu is suffering boga. I forgot. So, Vivek Ooh. Prabhu, if you're free, you can read. 
Bro, uh, oh, like I'm traveling. If disturbance is there, uh, I can't. Is there clear now? Yes, Prabhu. It's clear also. It's okay, clear. I, then I can read. Okay, Haribo. At, at this time, Krishna and Balrama were given charge of the clouds. The first responsibility of the covered boys was to take care of ch little clouds. The boys are trained in this from the very beginning of their childhood. So long, uh, so along with uh, other little covered boys, Krishna and Balrama went into the uh, pasturing ground and took charge of the clouds and played with their play playmates. While taking charge of the clouds, sometimes the two brothers played on their flutes and uh, sometimes they played with uh, Amma, Amaliki flutes and uh, bile flutes, uh, just like uh, small children play with balls. Sometimes they danced and made th uh, made uh, tinkling sounds with their ankle bells. Uh, sometimes uh, they made uh, themselves into bulls and uh, cows by covering themselves with uh, blankets and those Krishna and Balrama played. The two brothers are also used uh, to imitate the sounds of bulls and cows and play at uh, bull fighting. Uh, sometimes they use it to imitate the sounds of various animals and birds. In this way, they en enjoyed their childhood pastimes apparently like ordinary mundane children. Once, when Krishna and Balrama were playing on the bank of the Yamuna, a, a demon of the uh, name Vatasura assumed the shape of the cloth and came there intending to kill the brothers. By taking the shape of a cloth, the demon uh, could uh, mingle with other clouds. Krishna, however, spe uh, specifically noticed this, and he immediate, uh, immediately told Balarama about the entrance of uh, entrance of the demon. Both brothers they then followed him and uh, sinked up upon him. Krishna caught a hold of the demon cloth by the two uh, hind legs and tails tail uh, we we put him around very force forcibly and threw him up into a tree the demon lost his life and fell down from the top of the tree to the ground when the demon lay dead on the ground all the playmates of krishna congratulated him well done well done and the demigods in the sky began to show flowers with great uh, satisfaction in this way, the maintainers of the complete creation, Krishna and Balarama, use it to take care of the clouds in the morning every day. And thus they enjoyed the, their childhood pastimes as covered boys in Vrindavana. All uh, covered boys would daily go to the bank of the river Yamuna to water their calves. Uh, usually, uh, when the calves drank water from the Yamuna, the boys also drank. One day after drinking, when they were uh, sitting on the bank of the river, uh, they saw a huge animal which looked sometimes like a duck and, and was a big as a hill. Its uh, top, uh, its top was as strong as a thunderbolt. When they saw the unusual animal, they became afraid of it. The name of this. Kamsas. He uh, appeared on the since uh, suddenly and uh, since suddenly and immediately attacked Krishna with his point pointed uh, sharp beaks and quickly uh, swallowed him up. When Krishna was there, uh, swallowed uh, swallowed uh, all the boys headed by Balarama became almost uh, breathless as if they were dead. But when the Bakasura demon was solving swallowing up Krishna, he felt a burning fairy, fairy uh, sensation in this throat. This was due to uh, the flowing effulgence of Krishna. The demon quickly threw uh, Krishna up and uh, tried to uh, tear to kill him uh, by pin pinching him in the his Weeks. Bhagasura did not know that uh, although Krishna was playing the part of the child of Nanda Maharaj, he was uh, still the original father of Lord Brahma. 
the creator of the universe, the child of the mother, Yashoda, who is the reservoir of pleasure for the demigods and who is the maintainer of saintly persons, got hold of the peaks of the uh, great uh, gigantic duck and uh, before his uh, cowherd boy uh, friends uh, before his mouth just as a uh, child were easily splits a blade of grass from the sky the uh, denizens of the heavenly planets showed flowers like the chameli the most fragrant of all flowers as a a uh, token of their congratulations accompanying the shores of the uh, of flowers was a vibration of uh, uh, bugles uh, drums and conchals when the boy was the uh, sh showering of flowers and uh, heard the sensational sounds they became touched with wonder struck with wonder when they saw krishna they all including balarama were so pleased that it seemed as if they had regained their uh, very source of life. As soon as they saw Krishna coming towards uh, them, they one after another embraced the son of Nanda and held him to their chests. After this, they assembled all the calves under their charge and began to return home. When they arrived home, they began to uh, speak of the wonderful activities of the son of Nanda. When the gopis and covered men all heard the story from the boys, they felt great happiness because naturally they loved uh, Krishna and hearing about his glories and victorious activities, they became still more affectionate toward him. Thinking that the child Krishna was saved from the mouth of, mouth of the death, uh, they began to see his face with great love and affection. They were full of anxieties, but they could not turn their face from the vision of Krishna, the gopis and the men uh, began to conserve almost themselves about how the child Krishna was attacked in the in so many ways and so many times by so many demons, and then uh, and that the demons were killed and uh, Krishna was un uninjured. They continued to conserve uh, converse uh, um, almost themselves about uh, about how so many. Great demons in such precious bodies attacked Krishna to kill him. But by the grace of Hari, they could not cause even a, a, sl a slight injury. Rather, they did uh, like a small flies in the air, in a fire. Those they rem remembered the uh, words of uh, Gargamuni, who foretold by dint of his vast knowledge on the Vedas and astrology that this boy would be uh, attacked by many demons now they actually saw the saw that this was coming true word for word for word all the elderly, elderly covered men including nanda maharaj used to talk of the wonderful activities of lord krishna and balarama and they were always so much absorbed in those talks that they forget forgot the their uh, threefold miseries of this material existence uh, this is the effect of Krishna consciousness. What was enjoyed uh, 5,000 years ago by Nanda Maharaj can be still be enjoyed by persons who, who are in Krishna consciousness simply by associates. Those by Balarama and Krishna enjoyed their childhood pastimes imitating the monkeys of Lord uh, Ramachandra who constructed the bridge over the ocean and Hanuman who uh, jumped over the water to Stelion uh, and they used to imitate such pastimes among their friends and so happily passed their childhood life. Those ends uh, Bhaktivedanta purport of 11th chapter of Krishna killing the demons Vaktasura and Bakasura. Haribo. Haribo. Thank you so much, bro. Okay, tomorrow we continue with killing of Agasura. Hare Krishna, bro. Then you, you, have, you have some very hard time to control your senses. Because you have, There's a class here, hey? Oh, very Jiani Prabhu. Sorry? Very Jiani Prabhu. Is this some recording? In the Vaishnava Sangha. Ah. 
Yes, Prabhu. Oh, you can see us. Yes, maybe we all should join there, but we should. Oh, yes. We need to chant the six second prayers. Quite simple. So let's chant quickly and then let's call listen. Cheto darpana marjanam bavamaha davagni nirvapanam shreya kairava chantrika vitaranam vityava du jivanam anandam budivardanam pratipadam purnam ritasvadanam sarvatmas napanam param vijayate sri krishna sankirtanam त्रिनाद अपि सुनीचेन तरो अपि सहेश्नुना अमानिना मनादेना कृतन्य सदहरि Atanam na janam na sundarim kavitam vaja gadisha kamaye mama janmani janmani shvare bavatat bhakti rahai tu ki tvai. Ainam datanu jatim karam patitam mamishame bhavam dho. Kripayata vapada pankaja stita dhule shatra samvichintaya. Haribo. Nainam galada prudhara. Avadanam Gadgadaruta, Grapula Keranashitam Bapoka, Tavanama Grani Bavish. Very good. Thank you so much. Divide them, Nimi Sena, Chakshusha, Ravashaitam, Sunyaitam, Jagat Sarvam, Govinda, Virahename. Ashley Shavadaratam Vinastuma, Mother Shana, Maramahata, Karotuva, Etata Tava, Vidadhatulam Pato. Ribo, glory to the Sri Krishna Sankirtan, which cleanses the heart of all the dust accumulated for years and extinguishes the fire of conditional life of repeated birth and death. The Sankirtan movement is the prime benediction for humanity at large because it spreads the rest of the benediction moon. It is the life of all transcendental knowledge. It increases the ocean of transcendental bliss and it enables us to fully taste the nectar for which we are always anxious. O oh my Lord, your holy name alone can render all the benediction to the living beings. And thus you have hundreds and millions of the names like Krishna and Govinda. In these transcendental names, you have invested all your transcendental energies. There are, there are not even hard and fast soul for the chanting these names. O oh my Lord, out of kindness, you enable us to easily approach you by your holiness. But I am so, I am so unfortunate that I have no attraction for them. One should chant the holy name of the Lord in a humble state of mind, thinking oneself lower than the straw in the street. One should, one should be more tolerant than a tree devoid of all sense of false prestige and should be ready to offer all respects to others. In such a state of mind, one can chant the holy name of the, of the Lord constantly. Prabhu, is this the, is that one? Eh? Oh, Almighty Lord. I have no desire to accumulate wealth, nor I desire beautiful women, nor do I want followers. I only want your godless devotional service parts after what? O son of Maharaj Nanda, Krishna, I am your eternal servitor. Yet somehow or other, I have fallen into the ocean of birth and death. Please pick me up from this ocean of death and place me as one of the atoms at your lotus feet. O oh my Lord, when will my be decorated with tears of love flowing constantly when I chant your holy name? When will my voice choke up and when will the hairs of my body stand on end at the recitation of your name? O oh, Govinda, feeling your separations, I am considering a moment to collect 12 years or more. Tears are flowing from my eyes like all runs of pain and I am feeling all wicked pain in the world. You are absent. I know no one but Krishna as my Lord and he shall remain. So even if he handles me roughly by his embrace or makes me broken hearted by not being present before me, he is completely free to do anything and everything for he is always my worshipful Lord, unconditionally. 
Haribol, Sri Six Astagam Ki Jai. Jai. Embrace everything. Tell you. I think we should all join there after that, ne? Yes, Prabhu, you, you can join now. Yeah, it's perfect from here, hey? Baja Prabhu, is that for book distribution? Oh, Haribo, uh, so many you know, books. take this seriously, you know. So, this is so messed up. Yes, Baja Hari so, Prabhu reads these all books. The, the best thing then he puts the, one book, when he reads, he puts Prabhu. it there. So, I'm very... Oh... Yeah. I've been mm, very fortunate. And... Yes, Prabhu, he reads so much. Not so much, Prabhu, but not getting now the time for uh, reading. Yes, Prabhu. Because, because used... of Sankritana. Oh, see, Apple. this is very beautiful. Is it because of Sankritana? Harinam Sankritan. <laughs> Can you hear me, Prabhu? Yes, yes, Prabhu. Today is Narada Bhakti Sutra. Mm. Is your red? Mm. Yes, Prabhu, I've never seen that before. Mm. This is all the compiled through the uh, verses from the all the scriptures, like. Uh, ah, yes, Prabhu. Yes, for uh, Nama. This is some 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 of the Iskon guys. This one. Yes, bro. Oh, yeah. Actually, this is about the Srila Prabhupada. So I took nice, this. Yeah. This is come story from Bhagavatam. This is rhyme from Bhagavad Gita. Yes, Prabhu. The Bhagavatam story says so a few days ago. Mm. Nice, this is nice to buy the Puru, uh, some Puranjana Das something. Mahabharata. I didn't uh, get this Mahabharata. I will start now. <laughs> hmm. Yes, Prabhu. Yeah, I have it also. This one? I've seen this. I've I've quickly gone through it on the PDF. <clears throat> yeah, this is nice one. Then I have a lot of Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> if, some, if someone will come come forcefully, I will make him <laughs> read Bhagavad Gita. Yes, this is very nice. This is basics of Bhagavad Gita. Yes, Prabhu. Sorry. Definitely, I need to surrender more to Shri Prabhupada, Prabhu Kishpa. Thank you so much for the pronunciation, Prabhu. 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 Semi Prabhu, Hare Krishna Bajari Prabhu, how are you? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Well, Sundar Gopal Prabhu is coming to Pandit. Yes, Prabhu. Prabhu is coming on the 8th, uh, uh, 8th of the October. Yes, Prabhu. And he will stay a long time, I heard. Yeah, he's uh, uh, actually, uh, I heard you also coming. No problem. I wish I could come down. <laughs> uh, 
Samir Prabhu, come. Uh, then we, we can request Prabhu to stay more. Yes, Prabhu. <laughs> <laughs> so plan and come. <laughs> <laughs> next month is next next month is actually pro uh, the kartik month you know yes, damodar prabhu. month yes i i'm thinking will pralad prabhu will he go this year to vrindavan with devotees yeah so plan na pro make the plan <laughs> just fly <laughs> yes prabhu <laughs> prabhu India. Yes, bro. Oh, saying oh, semi Prabhu. I was asking semi Prabhu. Um, can't you live cast it in here, Prabhu, so that we don't exit? Like how? Like what? What Giani Prabhu is saying? Like, can't you play it in here like you did previously? Yes, Prabhu. But I was listening to what Bajahari Prabhu was showing, so because Giani Prabhu was speaking so loudly, so I couldn't hear. <laughs> Oh, Prabhu, how we can leave this material world if we don't surrender to a pure devotee? This is impossible. We, we, Krishna said himself that we have to surrender to his pure representative, you know. So the only way to cross this material nuisance is to uh, surrender to a pure... Yes, Prabhu, we can join there soon. Oh yes, yes. Okay, bro. Thank you so much for your Thank you so much, bro. 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 Thank you so much, Ah, okay, okay. And uh, then uh, after uh, uh, tying the steels, we have to uh, make design for that also, like uh, by the RCC or, or concrete or something. And uh, uh, then we will start for the inside the design. Yes, Prabhu. Yes, this will be the most interesting part, I think. I'm waiting to see how it comes out. Yeah, most interesting and most uh, expensive. Yes, Prabhu. Yeah, definitely. I hope Actually, uh, all all the workers are coming from the Rajasthan, North India. Hmm. They will stay here and uh, they will do all the work. Ah, yes, okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it will take some uh, two months, bro. Oh, okay. Yes, mm -hmm. That's, mm. that goes really quickly. Yes, bro. So are you all gonna move, or is it for new devotees? To the new temple that is being built. They are living already there, but they just made the, the top floor now because they have already oh. made the previous floors. Now they make the top floor. Oh, oh. Then there is. So, then what's going to happen to the old temple? Eventually, it will be opened. Like, fully. Oh. Okay, okay, Prabhu. Now it's been like five years in construction, and in one year. Five. Yes, Prabhu, five years. Hmm, that's a and, long time. Yes, Prabhu, Prahlad Prabhu has been... Because, you know, while we build the temple, we at the same time, we collect the funds for it. So it oh. looks like that we wait for the funds and then we start to build. As as we get donation, we continue and continue. And by that, it has been coming out and it's soon. Like, past two years has been really fast progress. Oh, yes, yes, yes Prabhu. Hmm. It will be really nice when it's ready because the design is really beautiful and it's in an amazing place because there is big lake and it's full of nature and everywhere you can see the temple and the top floor also you can see everywhere from there. So it will be, oh. it will be really attractive to everyone because there is a road also going and when they go they will see it from there and Will be really nice. Oh, yesterday, yes, yes. yesterday we installed uh, two loudspeaker on the top of the temple. Uh, we are playing uh, now. We are playing the Hare Krishna Ma mantra. Uh, later we will play the Bhagavad Gita uh, all day. 
Yes, Prabhu. Oh, yeah. I heard from Subham Prabhu. Prabhu. Prabhu is playing audio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, audio for me. Oh. <laughs> Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. How many times have you read the the Bhagavad Gita? What Prabhu? I didn't understand. I was asking Bhada Haridas Prabhu. How many okay. times he is read? Uh, how many times have you read the Bhagavad Gita? Uh, Prabhu, now the fifth time. Haribo. Yo, oh, fifth time. Yo, Haribo. Yeah. <laughs> I've read all mm. Actually, bro, first time I didn't understand anything. Yes, <laughs> yeah, oh, yes, yes, Prabhu. And uh, in the first time, it was too much boring. And uh, like, uh, uh, mind was saying that, why are you reading this? What is this? Oh, <laughs> then later, yeah. later, oh you still have a scale mind like us. Because Prabhu, the, the, the Hindi, I was reading in the Hindi and the Prabhupada having the pure Hindi. Oh, yes, 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 Prabhu. And we, in generally, we are using the mixed one, Hindi, English, uh, and uh, Marwadi, and all the language mix, and we are using. But this the pure Hindi, it was a uh, little, in digestion, it was little not yes. coming. So, Oh, so yes, let, yes, uh, with the help of devotee, I got uh, interest, and then I myself got interest. Uh, third, fourth, and uh, now fifth time the, is very nice, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see when you recite the slokas, they're really deep for you, hey? Yeah, but still, I'm uh, not uh, perfect in uh, recitation of sloka. Yes, yes, <laughs> I understand, <laughs> Prabhu. <laughs> Because Sanskrit, uh, we, we only read until the 10th Sanskrit through, until 10th. And it was only for the passing monks. Hmm. Hmm. So now it's the interest based now. <laughs> so what about Srimad Bhagavatam Prabhu? Srimad Bhagavatam we are reading through uh, online actually. Uh, I don't have, I have first canto only. Uh, so I'm reading on the Veda base. I'm trying to get uh, some sponsorship so I can be uh, I, did, uh, I can remove the phone from uh, <laughs> reading. Oh. I, I, don't like to, I don't like to read by the phone. Oh, yes. okay, okay, Prabhu. Yeah, it's it's actually annoying and disturbing at the same time. Yeah, by the book uh, reading I prepare and uh, it's very nice actually for me. I don't know for other side. And I see, Prabhu, you are reading this Bhagavad Gita as it is. Aren't you reading the original one at the temple? Yeah, yeah, we are reading the original one, Prabhu. Oh, you just like that one, this one? Uh, no, Prabhu, we have, uh, we have this one, Prabhu. Ole Bhang, Prabhu. See that Bajahari Prabhu has the original one. Oh, yes, yes, oh. Yeah, that, that is the picture. And, uh, again... Oh, yeah, I can see it's three different types yes, that this, you have. This one, this one. Those others are different language. Oh, yeah. oh. And then, oh, that's the Mahabharat. Okay. Do you distribute those ones? The, there's a lot of, do you distribute those Bhagavad Gita? Like, do you do book distribution with them? Yes, Prabhu. Uh, yeah, yeah, Prabhu. We do original. Actually, we prepare to do the original one. But uh, the in the other language, we don't have the Macmillan edition. <laughs> so oh. we forced to do. We forced to do the others one. Yes. Oh Prabhu. yes, yes, Prabhu. I understand. Yeah, but uh, it's it's nothing. It's nothing matter, Prabhu. Actually, the uh, purity of Prabhupad is there. Don't worry. Oh yes. Philosophy Prabhu. is not changed. Yes, yes, Prabhu. I understand. Mm. Yeah. Sammy, you shifted. Now I think it's ending. Hey? It's terrible. They're gonna leave. Yeah. <laughs>
and I wanted to show you that verse yes, by oh, following Prabhupada instruction. Oh, yes, Prabhupada will get it. about sporting. Yeah, it... well, where is let me check? Uh, go to Prabhupada Vani actually. I wanted you to listen to that video, the audio, it's just like one minute. I've lost one node. There it is. One second. You lost what, Prabhu? Oh, it's here. Yeah, I found it. I think Prazal Prabhu texted, I don't know who. Is it Baja Haridas Prabhu? He said he can help with the sponsor, Lepi. Oh, Haribo. Prenzal Prabhu ki jai. Haribo. He always helps me in the saver too, hey? Yes, Prabhu. And I saw him by mistake. Did you see my message? <laughs> yes, sometimes he gives rare darshan. Yeah. Yeah, you can just go to Prabhu Padvani. I wonder how many phones does Pranjal has, eh? Because there were two phones joined in the Zoom session and one joined in the, what do you call it, Vaishnava Sangha video call. Yes, bro. Oh, maybe it's a computer and phones. Yes, he has he has some super computer, some Na NASA, you know, technology. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> he's there. Yeah, he has some graphic cards, like double twin cams. Maybe his computer's like worth, I'm not sure if he's in dollars or what. Is but it, maybe like two thousand, three thousand dollars. So these are subtle computers. They work on subtle elements. <laughs> yeah. Computer is made of knowledge. It can play all type of games. You see, like you get those underrated games. Yes, Primo. Okay, now we see the ten offenses. Who knows the first offense? To blaspheme the devotees who have dedicated their lives for propagating the holy name of the Lord. I think I switched up somewhere. Go. To consider the names of Lord, to consider the names of the demigods like Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma to be equal or independent of the names of the Lord Vishnu. Go. To disobey the order of the spiritual master or consider him as. Or to consider the son of the Lord, which is the father of the Vedic scriptures, or the scriptures which is the father of the Lord. To consider the chanting of Hare Krishna to be imagination and to give some interpretation to the holy name of the Lord. To commit sinful activities on the strength of the holy name. Says uh, to consider the chanting of Hare Krishna to be an uh, auspicious ritualistic activity which is offered in the Veda that could be activities Karma Kanda. Things like the faith about the glories of the holy name. And yeah. then to not have complete faith in the chanting of the holy name and to maintain material attachments, uh, even after understanding so many instructions on this matter. And uh, it is also an offense to be inattentive while chanting. Devotee. Every devotee who claims to be Vaishnava must uh, guard against uh, these off offenses in order to quickly achieve the desired success, Krishna Prema. Asit Prabhu. Yeah, probably. Yeah. 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 Y